Greetings, true believers, and welcome to another eerie episode of History of the Marvel Universe. This show is sponsored in part by Patreon supporters. Head over to patreon.com slash marymarvelate to vote in monthly polls and help decide what topics get added to the schedule. This week's video is going to be a little different from normal. Usually I pick a character or a topic and explore the canonical backstory, origin, and or history, taking into account the various revelations and retcons. However, the subject of today's video, Arthur Harrow, has only ever appeared in one comic. Specifically issue number two of the second Moon Knight series, sometimes referred to as Fist of Kanshu, in 1985. So for this video, we're going to take a detailed look at the story told in that issue, but first, let's give a quick refresher on the book's title character and the events that led into that series. Mark Spector, the Moon Knight, first appeared as a mercenary who was hired by the villainous committee in the pages of A Werewolf by Night. The character subsequently starred in his own solo stories in two issues of Marvel Spotlight, where he was cast in a more heroic light, and members of his supporting cast were established. He continued to make guest appearances in other books and received a series of backup stories in the Hulk magazine until he was given his own solo series in 1980, five years after his initial appearance. In the first issue of this solo book, his backstory was revealed, and in the fourth it was explained that his dealings with the committee were the result of an undercover investigation he was embarking on. For the full story on the origin of Moon Knight and his various personalities, you can see my video on that topic. The short version is that Mark Spector was a mercenary who was left to die in the Sahara Desert after betraying his bloodthirsty employer. However, he was seemingly resurrected by the Egyptian god Khonshu and became the Moon's Knight of Vengeance. He also saved a woman named Marlene Alron, who became his trusted confidant and eventual lover. In his quest to punish evil as Moon Knight, Spectre also established two more identities, Wall Street millionaire Stephen Grant and a streetwise cabbie named Jake Lockley. It was later revealed that these alternate personalities were actually the result of Mark Spector's dissociative identity disorder. However, it was the Stephen Grant persona who Marlene was drawn to and started a relationship with. The first Moon Knight solo series lasted for 38 issues before coming to a conclusion in 1984. At the end of that series, Spectre suffered a mental breakdown and attempted to abandon his alternate identities and settle down with Marlene. However, the following year in 1985, Moon Knight would return for a six-issue series. The first issue begins by briefly recapping his origin and the events from the previous volume which led him to this point. In his attempts to leave his previous life behind, Spectre auctioned off the sacred statue of Khonshu. This statue was obtained by a man named Ahmad Aziz, who believed himself to be the reincarnation of a priest of Anubis. Calling himself Anubis the Jackal, Aziz plotted to destroy the Moon God and assert his own dominance over the night. And so, Mark Spector was drawn back into his role after he was mentally contacted by a trio of ancient priests who had served Khonshu for thousands of years. The priests wanted him to return to Egypt, but Marlene told him that if he left again, she wouldn't be there when he got back. However, after being attacked by an agent of Anubis, Spectre made the journey to meet with the priests in their hidden temple. They presented him with new weapons and armor to aid him in his mission. It was later revealed that most of these weapons were crafted by Hawkeye when the West Coast Avengers were stranded in the distant past. They also granted him a new power, vastly increasing his strength while under the light of the moon. And thus, the Moon Knight was reborn to resume his role as the Fist of Khonshu. Of course, his first mission was to defeat Anubis the Jackal, which he accomplished with help from the Moon God. And this brings us to the focus of today's video, Moon Knight Volume 2, Number 2, Deadly Knowledge. This story begins in Yucatan, Mexico, where three men, covered in electrical devices, were delivering two captives to a Mayan pyramid. There we meet the man pulling their strings, Dr. Arthur Harrow. He declared that he would implant the electrodes in these new subjects, testing their resistances to pain. 
Harrow himself suffered from a condition known as trigeminal neuralgia, which paralyzed part of his face and inflicted him with agonizing pain. We next cut to New York City, where Mark Spector finds that Marlene was true to her word. While looking for her in one of her usual haunts, he witnessed a man harassing a woman and decided to intervene. But with his strength increased by the moon, Spectre mistakenly shoved the man too hard, pushing him out to sea. However, he wasn't going to let the man drown and swam out to save him. Upon returning to shore, a crowd had gathered to watch what was happening, and Marlene Alron was among them. Mark tried to confront her, but Marlene ran off, not wanting to talk to him. He debated whether or not he should let her go, ultimately deciding to follow her. Questionable choices aside, his plan was interrupted by another vision of the three priests of Kanshu. They declared that he was needed again and showed him a vision of the Mayan temple, Arthur Harrow, and a woman he hadn't yet met. The trio also gave Spectre an address to investigate in Mexico, and so he started his search there. And he found the first clue towards his purpose there when he spotted the woman from his vision. As she walked away from the hotel, she was abducted by two armed men, but Mark Spector changed into his Moon Knight costume and followed. Although he lacked his superhuman strength in the daylight, he was still able to rescue the woman who introduced herself as Dr. Victoria Grail. Moon Knight then asked about Harrow, and Grail explained everything she knew. Arthur Harrow was a doctor whose work in pain theory had made him a candidate for the Nobel Prize in medicine. However, Dr. Grail raised concerns regarding his nomination, deducing that the results he'd gained couldn't possibly have been derived from the animal testing outlined in his research papers. Suspecting that Harrow was engaging in human experimentation, Grail investigated further and discovered that Harrow's work continued from the inhumane experiments conducted by Nazi scientists at Auschwitz during World War II. The results of those original experiments were ordered to be destroyed during the Nuremberg trials following the war, but some documents survived and were eventually obtained by Harrow. And so Grail was sent to interview Harrow and report back to the Nobel Committee in Stockholm. She followed him to Yucatan, where he was supposedly studying native animals, but plantation workers had been mysteriously disappearing. Since one attempt had already been made on her life, Moon Knight offered to bring Grail back to the hotel. However, Grail insisted on stopping Harrow since she was a descendant of concentration camp victims. Meanwhile, Harrow was continuing his work beneath the Mayan ruins, testing and torturing innocent captives. He had successfully created electronic implants that prevented the wearer from feeling physical pain, but longed to find a more permanent chemical solution which he could utilize on himself. It's here where we learn that Harrow was not, in fact, working alone. Rather, he was associated with an enigmatic group known as Omnium. So enigmatic, it seems, that we don't actually know what their acronym stands for. In truth, it was Omnium who hired local mercenaries in an attempt to silence Victoria Grail. However, because a costumed vigilante had interfered, Harrow's superiors ordered him to evacuate with all of his research and equipment. For the next page, we have a scene with Marlene contemplating what to do next. Unsure of herself in her situation, she considered going back to her ex-husband for help. Meanwhile, Grail and Moon Knight reached the supposed location of Harrow's lab. With night falling and the moon in the sky, Spectre was able to use his super strength to break in. However, they soon discovered that this particular lab was mostly for show, not containing the equipment necessary for his experiments. However, their presence was noticed by Harrow from his secret underground lair. From there, he was able to release a captive jaguar that attacked Moon Knight. Fortunately, the masked hero was able to subdue the savage animal. After that, the two were able to find a hidden passageway leading underground. Following this stairwell, they discovered a secret lab, but Hero himself fled as they arrived. 
Moon Knight attempted to fight off the enslaved captives without injuring them, but this proved difficult while they felt no pain. In order to escape themselves, Moon Knight ripped down the door that Harrow had fled through and followed him with Grail. They emerged from the Mayan Pyramid, seen at the beginning of the story, but Hera was already boarding a helicopter as they did. Moon Knight prepared to stop Hera with a boomerang, but the Omnium agent piloting the helicopter tossed a grenade covering their escape. And that was pretty much the end of that adventure. Hera got away, but Victoria Grail was determined to find him again. In a moment of passion, Grail kissed Moon Knight, but he was still thinking of Marlene. She also decided to stay long enough to help the tortured victims, so presumably they were all returned to normal. Sometime later, Harrow returned to his superiors at Omnium, who had prepared a new lab for him in Paraguay. They also declared that Dr. Grail would need to be taken care of and that Moon Knight would pay as well. However, to date, this threat has never been followed up on. In the comics continuity, neither Omnium, Arthur Harrow, nor Victoria Grail have ever reappeared. The 1985 series continued for several more issues in which Moon Knight battled various enemies. The ongoing subplot regarding Mark and Marlene's relationship basically ended in the fourth issue when Marlene went back to her ex-husband, Eric Jules Fontaine. After that, the series changed writers and ended with number six. Marlene did return at the start of the subsequent 1989 series, Mark Spector Moon Knight, but the plot threads regarding Omnium and Harrow were never revisited. Perhaps we'll get the end of that story someday, but that's all I've got for this week's video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, share the video, and subscribe for more marvelous content. Be sure to leave a comment letting me know what Marvel hero or villain you want to hear about next, and as always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below if you would like to read them for yourself, as well as links to other places you can find me, including my Patreon page, where for only a dollar a month you can get your name in these special thanks here. So until next time, true believers, Excelsior!